So welcome back. Um, can you guys hear me well? I can hear you just fine. Okay, yes. let me see. Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, staying up to the final session of the school, or I mean, probably you will be watching the recording. Thank you. Uh, and I hope you have enjoyed the school, you know, here or there a bit. Um, and uh, especially the morning session. Um, so Nicola's lecture has set a, a very good stage um, for, for this online tutorial. And uh, um, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, first introduce some important technical details, uh, which was not covered in the lecture, but uh, somehow that's uh, crucial for the results. So it contains a three part, one is the, uh, the choice of the local projector and the bubble pointing and a brief uh, mention about the implementation. So uh, for, the, for the choice of the local projector, we actually have uh, uh, multiple options. And here are least the three uh, possibilities. The first one is what we have adopted and uh, Sam Cook has already talked about the, um, the, the warning interface uh, in the implementation. So the, the, the feature that we uh, use a large energy window and optimize the initial gas. Uh, so, so in the Congress uh, code, we adopt the same uh, uh, interface. Then another option is the project warning function which sometimes adopted in, in the, uh, so for instance, in uh, Christian Hawley's uh, DFT plus EDMFT code. And uh, the, uh, we also have it uh, implemented in another version of the DFT plus code. And uh, finally, uh, also possible option, the quasi-atomic minimum base set orbitals um, we have developed previously uh, in, in collaboration with uh, change our phones and, uh, and, uh, and the group in the MIT. So the caveat is that um, the local projectors are not form equal, but they define the correlated manifold. So therefore calculation results can differ if you use different projectors. So it's really important to compare results with a common interface. And I think that this is also one advantage of this uh, consuit uh, uh, software package where we, we are try to stick with the common, uh, common interface for the calculations using a different approximation. Uh, then the double counting, um, I think in the morning lecture, Nicola uh, mentioned this uh, functional for the uh, NC uh, DFT plus G risk. And because we introduce this uh, local uh, correlation explicitly in the functional, so then there should be some part uh, um, to, to cancel uh, to, to cancel the, the, the effective treatment of the local interaction, which is already contained in the, in, in the DFT exchange correlation energy functional. So this is often uh, uh, called the double counting. And uh, there are Again, the, there are several options, and uh, there are, um, um, and oftentimes the, the choice is uh, depend a bit on the on the and on the you know this on the practical, practical convenience and also um, oh, I mean also you, the double counting provides another handle to tune a bit about the occupation of, of your local quality electrons. So one, one, one is often the, uh, the, the, the first two options are commonly are the common choice in the, uh, the DFT plus U method, which is called a fully localized uh, uh, double counting and around the mean field double counting, which uh, I have the, the, the form on the right. And there are this uh, particular nominal double counting which simply fix the uh, balance of your uh, the electron. For instance, for iron, you can fix the um, 
the electron number to be six. And uh, I think uh, recently there is exact double counting divided by uh, Mr. Holly. You can also find the variant reference here. And then finally, uh, it's the, uh, the flow chart. Um, I think Nicola has already talked briefly. For typical DFT plus series per calculation, we start with, with uh, converged uh, the DFT calculations. So we start from the electron density from DFT calculation, then construct the, uh, the uh, generalized Kunshan Hubble Hamiltonian. And uh, we solve that on the, on the uh, on the good weather level, and we check the energy convergence. If not, then uh, we update the electron, electron density back to DFT and construct the, uh, the Kunshan Hubble Hamiltonian again. And then the loop, uh, it, it iterates until convergence is reached. And if we, in some particular choice, if we, uh, we also have an external uh, loop for, for, for the double counting. That depend on the specific choice of the uh, of the double counting, and in the tutorial we also um, include the one. Well, there's a question. Uh -huh. How is double count? Is, is exact double counting, and uh, whether it's really exact or whether it's still approximate. We actually um, the double counting. They. Um, the, 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 the effect of double counting is mainly to control the, uh, the occupation of the local electrons. And uh, in, in, I mean, in practice, sometimes you do need it to, uh, I mean, some, in, in practical calculation, sometimes it, it do become crucial. And uh, you can find that there are quite a uh, few discussions, especially within the context of uh, DFT plus DMFT. And, uh, so the, the, the form of the double counting and also actually the form of the projector sometimes do make significant difference. And there are um, arguments on which type is, is the best. And in, in, in principle, uh, you, you wanted your, for instance, you want your projector to be as low class as possible so that you are, uh, for instance, you evaluate the screen that, uh, coolant construction has, uh, 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 at, uh, I mean, have uh, at least approaching zero frequency to, to remain the constant. And uh, there, um, I mean, there, there are also discussions on the, on the choice of double content. I think a good reference is, uh, uh, is uh, Chris, uh, Christine's paper where he talk about this exact double counting. But I think the main thing is that because we introduced the cooling interaction and how, how do we correctly evaluate the, the, uh, the, the um, kind of expedition value of that uh, cool, onside the cooling interaction at the DFT level, right? So then there are some good argument over there. And uh, in practice, this exact of the double counting forms quite similar to the nominal double counting. Does it kind of clarify a bit about your question? Adam said, thank you, okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here we are doing this, uh, uh, especially in the calculation for real materials, then um, unfortunately there are many, quite, quite a few details which are actually quite crucial. Um, so then uh, in this tutorial, we also include one example for this uh, linear uh, quasi-particle self consistent with GW plus uh, G risk. The, uh, the idea is similar because for the LQS GW method, it gives you a similar quality particle hamiltonian. And uh, then in the DFT plus G risk, we use the uh, bare band dispersion from DFT calculation. And in the LQS GW, it gives a similar quality particle 
uh, hamiltonians. So one can naturally build on that. We added the uh, on-site cooling functions, and then essentially it's the so the essentially the idea is similar. Um, so in in terms of L QSGW, then you know the the previous group is, is exactly the same as Andrew has talked about. This uh, we calculated this quadrupartite cooling function. We evaluate the dynamic variability, then go to uh, screen cooling, calculate screen cooling function, and the self energy. Then we the crucial step is we linearize the self energy so that we get a, a similar uh, non interacting quadrupartite hamiltonian. Then we solve that, we update this, um, this uh, we replace it, this uh, linearized quadrupartite hamiltonian by this good weather renormalized. Positive particle hamiltonian. And in principle, it can, it can send it back and finish the whole loop. But in the in the tutorial, you see that we only do a one shot in terms that we do a self-consistent LQS GW calculation. When they there we extract the quality particle hamiltonian uh, by, by the linearization, then we solve the, 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 this um, uh, generalized Hubbard model. Uh, uh, Using the linearized quadrupartite hamiltonian, and we, we simply stop here. So the uh, the structure of the code is kind of separate to two parts. One is Andre's code, this uh, FL FPW and the PT code, and the other one is the uh, cycles code, which is basically uh, the function that uh, it solves a, a, a generic Harvard model at the Guzwella level. So they, uh, there's several possibilities. One is that uh, uh, um, one needed input from for, for a generic Harvard type model for the for the Guzwella module. Right? So the, the generic Harvard type model can be input at the mo uh, model Hamiltonian. So you, you have the full flexibility to specify your non interacting part of the Hamiltonian. The other part is from the, as we have briefly said, from the DFT calculation. And the, another one is from the uh, LQS GW calculation. We, we use a common uh, one year interface, COM1 developed by Sam Cook. Uh, all over there, we essentially we, uh, we, we, we uh, map certain part of the bandwidth structure in, 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 the, in the energy window, essentially to, to some tight banding representation. Then uh, from there we will construct this uh, this this Hubble type Hamiltonian. Okay. So the uh, tutorial as I posted in the Slack it's it's located online. You can uh, start reading from there. And uh, it composed uh, four independent uh, examples. So depend on your background you can you can choose uh, start with this, uh, you can try this uh, tutorial sequentially or if you are already an expert in the, uh, the metabolic field and the, you for instance you want to directly go to this uh, DFT plus uh, with calculation you can start from this here and uh, you can also um, uh, try this LQS SPW and the, the the main point is that uh, here I want to set the, the first two examples kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's on the single band Hubble model but on different natives. The, the purpose is that to set some uh, the basic idea of what the Uzwella, uh rotational invariance theorem boson can accomplish. And, uh, um, and because it's done in some, uh, in some simplified model, it can be completed relatively fast. And also uh, we, we can uh, have a relatively uh, complete picture by scanning in, in a, a relevant parameter space. So you would have a kind of a, um, a broader picture of, of what the main method can, can achieve. And in those tutorials, I also, uh, add explanations of, about the possible limitations and improve 
documents and the uh, 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 references for further reading. And the, here we give an example for the uh, for the island in in BCC lattice. So we start from the telemagnet calculation and then uh, set up the typical telemagnet calculation. And then we also give give, us a, give a specific references uh, um, for for for, for detailed discussions on the, you know, on the comparison of, of the TFT plus good calculation, for, for instance, with LD or with DJ, what is the difference and what were the advantages? And the reference is uh, a uh, good uh, point to, to, to check. And this, um, also we have this um, iron selenide uh, calculation, and you know, also give this uh, reference of San Kukos geometry paper. You can see uh, uh, they kind of have some idea that that has really improved the, uh, the LQS GW bands and uh, improved in, in the right direction. And uh, of course, there, as Nicola said, there are some limitations. And uh, so, you could, but at least you can have some, some idea. So um, let me. So so far, any other question? So, so if no more question, then uh, what I'm going to do is I go to the um, go to the online tutorial. And I'll try, I'll try to um, also do some calculations on my side and, uh, and explain a bit more detail about the about the procedure. There's a question from Adam again. Uh huh. Okay. Let me Well, um, for a typical, it, 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 I mean, if you compare the 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 DFT calculation with the DFT plus G risk calculation, then the additional part is the the the, the interface and the and, and the as well the calculation for the um, for, for the Hubble model. Then uh, I would say if we consider transition metal metal or compound, then if we if we consider this um, effectively the Hubble model uh, with, with, with the uh, local interaction on the shell, then the, the code actually is very efficient. You, you really I mean, of course, it will be still a bit slow because we have external loop, right? But, but in, in terms of one, one self-consider calculation of the Hubble model, it takes about 10 minutes also. And then if you, if you, uh, if you go to uh, actinide system or, or lanthanide system, then over there, we, have, we are essentially uh, solving a, Embedding cluster composed of the f of f orbitals rather than the d orbitals. Right? Then over there, um, uh, for, for the early actinides and uh, lanthanide systems, then we can basically use some variance truncation scheme. It, it can still, for 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 instance the complexity solving the solving the theorem is, is about a, is about similar to the transition. Made of this year. And of course, and then the most difficult part is the protonium, which I have, which basically is a half feeding for the F shell. Then we actually have some, I have to pour some parallel uh, ED solver to, to solve that. And uh, um, so, so in, in terms of conventional, there is no normal GA. We actually can can calculate all the uh, the 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 transition metal and the national systems, and of course another 
complexity is that if you have low symmetry, right? So you're, it's like if you have low symmetry, then your self, self energy or you in the as well as this, this R matrix, this renormalization really matrix, or, or, the, or effectively the, the, the Guzwella nonlinear uh, non, non, non -linear solutions. The, uh, if you have lower symmetry, then you have more uh, in, independent variables. So then it will, of course, it will make your uh, Paul de Newton solution uh, more, more difficult. Right? Basically, roughly the the scaling of coordinate Newton solution for the nonlinear equation scale that n to the second. Right? So, um, no. So that that's roughly the the, the complexity. So you, mainly it, it's it's about your 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 the, your include your polarity orbitals related to the DRF orbital and also the symmetry about. And uh, again, I mean, if you can see the crystal field splitting and spin orbital coupling, then you know, in, in really low symmetry, then, then you basically have, you need, need to, I mean, basically, you don't have any local symmetry in, in, in your embedded Hamiltonian, then you have uh, many different uh, uh, in, in independent elements, then sometimes the, the convergence can, can be challenging. Okay. So let me um, see. let me start with the, um, so you can find the tutorial here. Then uh, in the first, I in principle you, you can actually download it. Uh, you know. Download the code for, for, from your virtual machine, and you can install it on, on, on your local cluster, which you know will usually run much faster. And uh, um, but here we we actually provide two two options, like right? how how you would install on on the on the on the virtual machine, and how you would install, for instance, if you have access to your local cluster. And then typically we will we, we work with the Intel environment. So we also provide uh, um, this, just, just you need to modify that a little bit. So, um, so let me move to the, uh, the, the first example of this uh, single band best uh, uh, Hubble model on the best lattice. So, um, So if you, I think you, um, if you try that example, if you encounter any problem, you can either post on Slack or on, on the chat box. But um, uh, so, let me, so let, let me just follow the tutorial sequentially. If we go to this uh, first, um, first example of, of the, uh, uh, one band Hamiltonian on best lattice. And actually, I have a uh, for uh, for convenience. If you if you can either follow the follow the steps on this um, tutorial, like I think it serves a pretty good introduction on the problem. If you are not uh, in in this field or not, I mean, um, or if you, for instance, if you are from GFT background, then here we we simply use the example uh, in order to, uh, um, I mean, of, of, oftentimes uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in order to uh, not touch the details of the, of the detailed lattice, right? we often specify the, the shape of the non interrupting uh, uh, the density of states. For instance, if we, if we work on a one band Hubble model, in on the best lattice in infinite uh, dimension, then the non-interrupting density of states is in the is 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 same circle. And uh, then uh, from that, you can actually, um, we, did that, we have defined um, 
for the convenience of tutorial, we have to define the predefined scripts uh, about uh, about how, how to specify the model. And, uh, and I think I have. Uh, Um, so, and, um, so here we 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 will do uh, two calculations. Um, one is that we will um, because the, the 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 simplicity of the model it it basically have two uh, two parameters for us to play with. One is the chemical potential. And then the other one is, is the uh, is cooling interaction, and uh, the the law of the the Hubble interaction is to tell how strong the uh, the local interaction is, and the chemical potential is to tune the electron feeling. And so for a uh, for a uh, um, for for the first example, we so we fix the chemical potential to be at zero. So that, that that means the chemical potential is here. Then the uh, we have we have one ele one electron feeling at each side. So it's yeah, it's exactly at a half feeling case. Then in that case, if we uh, do the calculation uh, by changing the, this uh, Hubble U from zero to five, let's say, then you can simply uh, uh, use, use this command line to do the calculation. And uh, the the um, the way it does is that it, it uh, changes the U parameter for, uh, for uh, on on the mesh, and uh, for 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 each mesh point, you have a specific Hubble model. model. You solve that, right? And uh, let me. Um, So, so then what it does is uh, um, at each mesh point it will it will calculate the uh, um, uh, solve the um, this um, of the model and um, there are maybe I can point it. So there, there are a lot of. Uh, just here, maybe it it would it. I mean, if you're interested, then right actually here we specify that we are using because we are solving this nonlinear equation. We are using a particular. Solver this modified uh, 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 high hybrid method, um, which actually is already implemented in the in the SciPy uh, package, and uh, so in each each time actually you, you see 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 this line, then actually, actually it's, it's solving it's a uh, it's a physical bias uh, to two side correlated impurity. Then uh, because the, the for, for the single band case it's extremely simple, right? The, because we all we, we only have uh, uh, we actually if 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 if, if we do not um, use any symmetry then we have two one one physical orbital one bias orbital and the, so in total four spin orbital. So the, the, the dimension of the Hilbert space should be 16. But here, if we, uh, in, in, in this particular, uh, yeah, okay. So, so but here, the point of that, because we are only interested in the, uh, uh, as Nicolas said, uh, for, for, for the correct uh, physical bias in the model, we are solving it at half feeding. Uh, so then additional constraints. So with that constraints, the dimension actually 
the, of that Hilbert space is only four, so it can be solved really fast. But here we did this one because we, we oftentimes we need to add because we are trying to um, so solve the model for uh, for the parliament case. Then basically we are here we are checking that uh, checking that this is this Coulomb state solution of your embedded Hamiltonian indeed has a total S equals zero, right? So so it, it should be a single state. And um, then after that, we, we have some, you know, the, the, there are, it is um, for the nonlinear equation, we have some, some error vector to, to check. So here, this one simply print out the, the maximum ele elements of that error vector. So then, uh, Um, it, it will take a few seconds, but uh, well, once you have that, then um, this um, it, it will generate this plot. This plot basically shows the total energy of the system, the, the double occupancy of the uh, the of this um, uh, singularity degenerate orbital, and uh, and then the double occupancy of the one band uh, of this uh, one band of the model. And uh, you can typically see that, um, if, as you can already see in, in the, when, when how the U is zero, then your chemical potential is here, right? Then it's a, then it's a typical uh, metallic state. Then the, the, the uh, when you increase this U, then you will see the decrease of the double occupancy to zero, and this uh, quasi particle weight to decrease to zero too, which means that the uh, you uh, um, this is quasi particle z go to zero means uh, literally you, you, it is each side is to be coupled, so it, it's it's in the it's in the model phase, and of course the, this model phase is uh. Uh, um, you can view it as a as a zeros order uh, because it it, it misses this high energy virtual excitations, which are actually uh, uh, um, important, right? And uh, but, but, but I mean here you um, but, but here I mean I, I guess the rationale that you, you gain the efficiency by sacrificing some 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 part of the Physics. Um, so yeah, then I here actually I add a note to this because they, they, this actually depicts this, um, this old famous Brinkman Rice metal insulated transition, uh, but uh, some some high energy virtual processes are neglected, and we do have uh, some re recent advances as Nicola discussed, in which you can further. Uh, check the reference here. And in the in the typical, uh, basically, if, if you plot the plot the density of states as, as a function of u, then you you will see that, that the semicircle become it becomes deeper and deeper. Then it essentially it vanishes, right? Because it, it is quite part corresponding to the to to the quarter particle weight in the model phase. You don't have any the particle weight. So then actually you, you, you don't, don't have any coherent part of it. But then, uh, then because you don't have, have the hub, hub of the band, right? So you, you, can, you cannot see uh, the, the band gap based on the, the, the density of states you have on the, on the normal G level. But nevertheless, actually you can still 
it, you, you can still get the size of the, of the band gap by, by changing the chemical potential. Basically, you move the chemical potential it originally in, in the middle, if you move it up, then essentially, eventually, you will touch it with this conduction band. Then, then you, you, you'll see the, the electrons start, start feeding again. And then by the, um, by the uh, amount of, you have tuned for the chemical potential, you can decide the band gap. So the, um, yeah, because here I probably says it had a pretty uh, dense maze. Um, but then actually you can do the similar, uh, similar calculation by, by the same command, but, but you add the inline option of this new, so that, that it tells the code that it, it, it will, uh, it, it, it will uh, do the calculation fit at this fixed of the parameter five, but then uh, doing the calculation on the mesh of mu from zero to three. And um, after that calculation is done, you, you, will have, you will see this essentially when your chemical potential sits in a gap. So you, you would not, not see any change in the total energy, the double potency, you no, know, this quasi particle weight and occupation. Because you, it doesn't cause any change by it because it's in the gap state. Then around here, your, your, your chemical potential touches the, the, the uh, conduction band, right? although you, you can directly see it on, 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 the, on the coherent uh, uh, the band structure. Uh, because uh, it's essentially the, the upper band is non coherent. But when, once you can touch that, you 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 see the energy starts increase, and uh, and uh, essentially you, you check this electron feeding n, the the, the you, you relate the chemical potential up there, the, then the electron start to fill in the system, so your the the electron occupation will increase. So exactly at that point, it tells us the band gap size. And because here it's it, because the model has a particle symmetry, then you roughly know the this is this bank up size is two times of this 1.4. Um, and again, you can you can find some uh, some uh, more recent improvement on on, the, on the, this type of calculation. It's essentially, it, it's essentially uh, uh, enabled access of the of the bands on these two applications. So. Um, Okay, so at least finished the, the um, okay, yeah, yes, I don't. If, if there's no this cap problem, then after the uh, condition of, of the run, you will see this uh, figure as I have just talked about in the next slide. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Um, how are we doing it so far? Yeah. 
Yes. So let's move to the next example. It's a check what an ad is. Um, I mean, please let, let me know if you encounter any problem while you are trying the example. So the, this. Um, Thanks for the update. Um, yeah, so in this example, uh, we are we are setting a 2D lab, 2D uh, checkboard lattice with nearly never popping. The I think the configuration is somewhere important here. It's a checkboard lattice from uh, uh, so we because essentially we are trying to uh, calculate the antiviral manages. So we want to have a initial with, with two in equivalent sites. So here, again, we have prepared some lattice on about, uh, some example on, on, you know, how to set it up with, the, um, with this, this model and how to set up uh, for AFM calculations. Um, actually, it's minus something. Um, Actually, yeah, I, one actually because you have all the script, you can actually look, look, look at the. The Python, the Python script um, about um, maybe it's useful, but um, roughly goes to how to uh, set up the calculation. For, for, for again, I'm, uh, I'm kind of going back to the previous example because it's actually the procedure is, is the same. We have um, in the days. Okay, so here in your um, virtual machine, we have uh, we have a main Python library called the PyGWIS. Over there, we uh, in in that module we have predefined several several uh, parameters, and uh, so it, so we here we in particular we uh, import this. Uh, this is the uh, best lab is model. Then um, I will put, I can go to that uh, a bit later on how to, you know, use. So basically, we have two options on how to set up the good weather ca uh, calculations. One is uh, you, you complete the setup, you, you, you didn't. You didn't say Python script. Though sometimes you want to do some batches calculation. It 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 it's becomes handy if you can directly set up your calculation only within uh, Python script where without 
any you know, manual input on the, especially on the screen. And then the other way um, for the real DFT calculation, I also give another, uh, we are introduced the other example how to set up the calculation on the, on the, on the screen by basically answer, answering uh, several questions. And uh, here there are some details like, um, like here we are, the, the data some uh, observables or the quantity we are interested in, for instance, total energy, quality particle weight, double occupancy, and uh, this orbital occupation. Then in here we are, to depend on your choice, we are scanning the parameter on, on the U mesh or, or, or the chemical potential mesh. Then uh, in the in the possible calculation, there's a um, um, one one crucial crucial input file, which is called this uh, g g g parent dot h five, and uh, but by the way, actually all the uh, input main input and out of the file except the, the 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 log file you see on the screen. Is, uh, is in main text, or all the other files are in the HDF file file because of the convenience to, you know, to manipulate the data using, using, for instance, using Python. And uh, here, um, here basically, um, in, 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 the, in the previous step, model calculation, you have already uh, set up some some predefined uh, uh, parameter file, and when when you do the scanning here, we simply modify. For for instance, if we are if we are modified this, uh, if we are doing a calculation on on the cooling cooling uh, interaction U mesh, right, we, we we simply modify the this this um, two body interaction matrix, and. Uh, um that's um then there there are uh, the other other places that because here we, we we're doing this uh, grand, uh canonical ensemble calculation so there is this um another this file this g bash that basically it has the uh, information of the bare Hamiltonian so Again, the bare Hamiltonian can be either from DFT or quality particle GW or, uh, or, or your simple uh, uh, this, uh, model Hamiltonian. And all over there, you, you can specify this chemical potential uh, if, if you choose to uh, uh, do the calculation in, uh, in a grand canonical setup. Then we have uh, this. Uh, one side was to uh, both uh, uh, to perform the calculation. After that, the main result is stored in this uh, G log dot uh, H5 file. And the, for instance, here you can access this uh, it, it is, uh, orbital occupation matrix in, in your polarity orbital. And here, because we have a single, we have a single band, right? So, 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 so the um, um, so the dimension is two, and the, here we get the total number of uh, electrons. And there, are, um, there, are kind of uh, quite a. And actually, hey, Yongxing, I'm not sure yes. if I kept up. Did you see the, the question oh, about that, parallel okay, run? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, here, uh, here, I think that if, well, here, I do not in, in the script. I do not provide that. Because, I mean, but by, by, by in principle, you can do that because it, it's it's a it's a scan 
on a U mesh, right? Because each mesh point you can you can calculate them independently. So so you so you can in principle you you can do that, but in the current script, I I I kind of don't have the, the option. But then in the uh in the in the gift in the third example about the iron on the BCC lattice, we we, we do have the uh, parallel option. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, there, um, because you, you want to get this, for, for instance, you get a double occupancy. Right? So basically, we are trying to have access to the, basically, it's the histogram of the, um, of all your local configurations. And uh, in order to do that, we actually did this command to perform some extra analysis. This analysis is just to analyze the final solution of your embedded Hamiltonian. And then we, for, for instance, if we want to get the histogram from there, we, we, we want to get the double occupancy here. So, um, so the, the, it, 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 this one it exactly gives us the double occupancy because the row is uh, essentially the the um, basically the 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 reduced many body density matrix in your uh, in your local Hilbert space and uh, and due to the convention the the, the f f first element corresponding to the double occupancy. Well, actually, uh, we actually the, the the code actually further further split the 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 uh, local reduced the many body density matrix in terms of valence blocks. Uh, so you basically your local uh, configuration can have a empty state, single local pass state, and a double occupancy state. Right? So here it is it, a valence block two means it's 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 in the uh, Double occupied state. And well, then um, finally, then we store all, all the quantity that we're interested in in some file. And then in, 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 here we have this option to, um, okay, here now. Yeah. So this is the final result you should be able to get when, uh, when you. Finish that this um uh this is a calculation uh, along the hypothetical extension base and you see this uh how we can decide the band gap and in more detail context. Actually, I mean, you can actually see um, if you are familiar with, you can actually see this, um, for instance, this uh, parameter file. So then you can see this explicitly. You know, this is the V2 coolant, two body cooling interaction tensor. And so, because we, we have four indices, and uh, generally we will have some. Uh, sometimes, I mean, it, it will probably clear later in the, in the example of iron, then you will have, uh, if, because you have some uh, uh, local cubic symmetry, then your only any one particle density matrix can be simplified if you, if you rotate your basis in, in certain symmetry adaptive basis. So the, this is some potential, you know, 
at additional rotation of your uh, local orbitals. And uh, I think I have some explanation later too. Um, here, um, I guess I can. Yeah, then, I mean, on the check what the lattice is. Um, so the, the, the purpose here is, you know, for, 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 the, for the set up the, uh, another model, the 2D model, and then we introduce this uh, uh, polymer and polymer calculation. And also we want to, uh, for instance, here we compare the photovoltaic calculation with Hatchford nuclear calculation, we point out what's the advantage right, for the for the for for the for, for the well approximation against the this, uh, why do they use main field approach so here maybe I can um so, so the, the, the first line is to basically actually try to reveal or I mean, even the, basically the same practice as we have for the single band uh, of the model in the best lattice. Right? We, we still scan this U, but here let me just give you another example that uh, it's, it's a typical behavior. In, we have the model transition here, and uh, we, which features this. Vanishing Z and the vanishing double currency, and then you have this uh, 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 constant energy once you enter the the the, uh, the model insulating phase. And uh, because here again we are, it's it's in the parameter solution, so your local magnetization uh, remains zero all the way. Um, Yeah, then um, and then afterward, uh, okay, so probably I can. Um, so for, for the check model model, we can see it's uh, the the color structure is quite similar. Like we set up the model and you know that there, there are some default initialization. And then um, uh, it depends on the So here we will only do the calculation along a certain however that you mesh and then we similar right we, we change for instance we uh, modify this two body pooling instructions and we run the calculation and I think well, what I want to point out is uh, the object here so when we have uh, you know, to perform the different calculations uh, using the same code. Uh, for instance, if we have this uh, dash SP, then it basically tells uh, the code it will uh, calculate this antiferromagnetic phase. Then uh, you can see that it is this flag to control the flag of this spin degenerate. And by default, this thing will be degenerate. If you have that, then it will, uh, will break the spin symmetry. So then, um, we, um, yeah. 
so then actually, so the whether the calculation is a uh, is a paramagnet or or or, uh, or anti ferromagnetic calculation is completely uh, determined by this flag, and um, it, um, I should go there. It's just it's just a simple flag has to to the uh, in the initialization procedure, which we explicitly reconciliation. And uh, uh, we also, we, we, he actually, um, um, I think on, on the first day there, there was also a question about the, like the relation between uh, DFT plus DMFT and the DFT plus U, right? So actually here uh, within the DFT plus was weather approach, uh, the, 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 the the crucial part is that we have this uh, impurity Hamiltonian. And if we solve that inferior Hamiltonian exactly, then, then we are actually doing the, do, 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 doing the, the so called the, the, the good work, normal good weather calculation. But we can also solve that, that you know, and then include the best uh, fine size system really hatch for. If we if we solve that with the H fork, then we actually doing something like the DFT plus U calculus. So so here basically we can also you know solve the model using you know either uh, DFT plus U level or DFT plus good weather level. Right? The, 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 the difference is that how you solve the included model. So once um, we, oh, by the way, it, 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 it is a uh, fairmark calculation and the primary calculation can be can be uh, uh, performed independently. Okay. Um, Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Because here, okay, so here the thing that they might uh, do the calculation in the same fold, right? There, there might be some conflict. Okay, in this fold, we can do this. Get another copy of the directory. Right. You, you, you can do the uh, antiferromagnetic calculation here. So this will set up the we we from the antiferromagnetic uh, uh, calculation. And the, what the, the the flag is doing that it sets the, um, the the spin it basically under the code we do that on on the on site one. We give some additional chemical potential for the spin, for for, for the spin, uh, spin down, right? And on the other side, we give uh, this where we shift the chemical potential for the spin up, up a bit. Right? So then, then it will when you feel the electron, then it will it will break the symmetry. Then the, if the if the system prefers the spin symmetry breaking solution, then it, it will go to that that solution. If not, then it will go back to the common solution. So assume we finish that, then you will basically see figure like this. Uh, uh, the, the key, uh, I think, uh, yeah, we have some, okay. So from here, we, of course, I mean, when the U increases, it's a, it's a, 
onsite full interaction increases, the, the energy will always increase. Right? But here, one point is that for, for the Z, uh, because it, it's a typical behavior in a spin symmetry break solution, the, 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 the Z for the normal cause world is a, is a, um, is a remains quite a big. Um, the, the, the this actually is another way. Um, it, it, it actually oftentimes it, uh, it it provides another uh, another way to uh, explore the, this uh, density states because you might have a question like uh, in in the morning lecture we mentioned that on the Kuzuela, uh slow boson level we do not have access to the Hubble events. But that's, but, but you, you pro, if you do some, some DFT plus U calculation and all those stuff, right? You, you, you know, for, for this, I mean, standard exam, the example for the DFT plus U is all more rigorously, it's a spin symmetry breaking DFT plus U calculation. For instance, for, for nickel oxide, or these uh, typical transition metal oxides. Then you you see that they do have the have the bands, right? Because those those, those are more insulated, and the, you even see, see, see the half the bands in, in the DFT class U. Then what is the? It, it seems contradictory, right? Because we said that it's a, a whose well risk uh, can can go back to say DFT class U if you, if we solve this. Uh, impurity hamlet only at the hatch fork level. But, but somehow we also say we do not have access to, to the hard bands. But for, for DFT plus U with similar breaking, we do have access to hard bands. So the, this is the case. I mean, so another way to access to the hard bands is, uh, is to break the symmetry. So as you can see here, if we break the symmetry, then actually we, the, the quality particle would be this, so for the quantitative weights do not vanish. So in that case, we actually uh, this is the reason. You know, you, when you collect symmetry, you can have access to the half of the band. Um, but then nevertheless, I think this double occupancy is it, it, the same, and it it, it will it, it, it will uh, continue to decrease because simply uh, to, to 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 take care of the penalty. Of the on-site on repulsion, then also we, we do see that this uh, by by breaking the spin symmetry, we do see the increase of the local magnetization. And uh, here to to have a clearer comparison, then we we plot these um, the, 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 the these uh the calculation for the parallel manifest and the anti parallel manifest on the, on the same figure. And you can see, indeed, I mean, uh, the, the, the 2D lattice favors a uh, uh, long range ordered, long range magnetic ordered uh, uh, phase. Right? So the, the FM phase actually has a, has a lower energy than the parallel manifest. And here again, we will mention that it is different behavior of the quality particle waves in the paramagnetic and the spin symmetry breaking solutions. And uh, for the double occupancy, we see uh, uh, it's due to this, actually due to the spin symmetry breaking, the, the double occupancy actually uh, becomes, in the model phase actually becomes a bit more reasonable because uh, even in the paramagnetic phase, in the model phase due, due to the high energy virtual excitation, the double occupancy, the double occupancy should not be rigorously zero. Um, and here again, we compare this uh, local magnetization. Um, So the um, 
Just in case if you are kind of impatient, then you, there are actually um, kind of have already pre calculated results in the ref folder. You can simply copy these uh, uh, results to the work directory, then you can use the, uh, this, uh, this predefined plot script to get the result. And uh, here, uh, oops. Uh, forward, I mean, we also provided a calculation for the, you know, essentially for the similar calculation on the DFT plus U level. Then here, um, we basically it is UHF means it's we solve the embedding hamiltonian at the spin on restricted touch fork level. Basically, it, it Basically, we find the spin symmetry breaking solution of the embedding Hamilton. Um, so uh, from here, you can see that it's, it will always be true that for Hatchfork and into the level, the Z is always Z is always one. Um, the, 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 the reason is simply uh, uh, you you you're doing the mean field right so so you you um you don't have the uh you 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 assume the the, the quality particle picture is perfect right so so you have one hundred percent of the quality particle uh, and the mathematically because of the the uh, the 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 particular formula of the of of, of z the uh the the uh new numerator actually look how the the dominant in in, in the hatchfork element so but here you still because of a spin symmetry breaking actually in the the, the dft plus the, the 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 uh you saw this uh model at at the anti phase you didn't uh, spin on a spin hatch fork is not, I mean, concerning the uh, double occupants, it's not that bad. Right? It's, it's also that the trend, trend is also correct. And also, this uh, low, low local magnetization is actually very close. So, if you plot them all together, um, you, can, you can see that. Um, I hope the color, okay. So you can see that for for instance, I mean, here if you check the check the energy, of course the paramagnetic phase will have the highest energy, right? Then here you can see that this uh, due to the, the better solution of the of the intuitive model, then the, the, this this anti-ferromagnetic phase described by Guzwiller, uh, the Guzwiller level. Has a lower energy than than the uh, antiferromagnetic manifest at that the on this spin on this Hatchfork level. Right? It's, it's simply it's also reasonable because the whose wave function because you, you can you, you can see that you that if if you if you solve the model at Hatchfork level, then you're basically what your underlying wave function is to just the non interact Hamiltonian besides zero. And if we solve the model at the good level, we actually uh, we solve the model at using the wave function, using the good weather variation wave function, which has additional degree of freedom uh, provided by the good weather projector. So then, because it's a variation of theory, and right, then you will of course end up with with low energy than than the mean field result.
Um, and also, um, uh, okay, another point I want to uh, point out is that, uh, okay, there is, uh, um, you can see some uh, difference on double currency, if, especially in the, in the small U region. And uh, I want to comment on this local magnetization. And you can clearly see, especially in, in the middle region, this local moment is, a, is, a, is smaller at the Budwala level than, than, than that in the Hitchcock level. They actually, it, 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 this is actually generally true because all, all the correlations which is missed in the in the spin on the spin Hatchbox method, actually all, all, all those fluctuations will, will tend to reduce the size of your local moment. And the, the, the local fluctuations described at the world level will help reduce the moment. And actually also the spatial correlations, because imagine, uh, in, okay, so in the morning lecture, we could have talked uh, some way of uh, systematic, uh, systematic improvement of the Boson method. One way is to add in these ghost orbitals, right? And then to tend to have better description of the spatial function and the best description of the energy or stuff. And even Along that, that direction, then you would recover the single site DMFT. Right? But we, we know single site DMFT still is not, not a final answer, right? There are also spatial correlation. And actually, here we are, so and another direction is for, of course, you, you can enlarge the Google projector rather than construct a Google projector at a single site. You can construct a Google projector at two sides or four sides, right? And if the Google projector is large enough, then it will, it will eventually converge it to, to the exact solution. So here, actually, the point is that also when you do this cluster version, a special correlation will also tend to reduce your, your uh, uh, low, local spin magnetization. So, Overall, the, the, the trend that there is, uh, um, so, I mean, there are, for the, the, the it's, it's a 2D Hubble model on this checkerboard lattice, there are, there, there are more or less accurate uh, or auxiliary field uh, quantum Monte Carlo calculation. Then over there, I think that this the saturated moment is not one, it's, uh, I think it's close to 0 0.7 rather than one, right? But I mean, again, there, there's a trade-off between the efficiency and the accuracy. We, one, one need to, I mean, if we deal with approximate method, we should know where the boundary is, you know, and how, and essentially, or, well, whether you want to go to higher level or not, and to, that depend on, the specific accuracy you require. And for completeness, actually, in the if, Finally, I have this um, example to, uh, to, 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 to do the calculation using spin restricted hatch fork. Right? So essentially it's solved the parametric state using hatch fork. Then you can see it's, it's, a, it's just as pretty uh, 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 boring straight curves because uh, here, uh, the, this, uh, you know, because here, the, if you solve the embedding Hamiltonian at hatch fork level with the solution have the uh, singlet symmetry, 
then you don't have any way to 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 uh to take care of the the uh, unfettered pulmonary palsy. As a result, you have fixed double occupancy, which is uh, 0 0.25, and it's fixed. And it's so uh, as as exactly this is the reason why right? when you, you you increase double occupancy fixed, so you are pulling traction. It is it, it, a it, it, uh, uh, it is a linear uh, linearly increases. So so um, uh, as a result, your total energy will really really increase. And, uh, and so finally, this is a, you can use this uh, script to have a summary plot of this uh, uh, check about the lattice um, uh, for, for the polymagnet and antiphonomatic calculation. Uh, using the weather method or the Hatchford method. And you can see that the, the point is that uh, you have uh, uh, this, if the system have favors spin breaking, then flex spin symmetry breaking will allow the energy. And if you have, uh, if your underlying wave function have more freedom, then it will uh, or, or, or also gain some additional amount of energy. Right? So you will, your energy will, will decrease with an uh, in, in, uh, increasing level of accuracy. And, uh, um, and also here summarize this, um, this, this local magnetization that I have uh, uh, about. So these concluded the uh, two model calculations, and then we can Um, maybe we we'll, we can wait uh, five minutes. The rest of it. Okay. So here, um, Yang Xing, there's one more question in the yes, chat window. Uh, yes. So. The method can handle very high U value, at least for this model. How dependent is the performance on U over J values? Um, on this particular model, then because we, we don't have J, right? It's, it's a singly, it's a single orbital case. But then for the um, for for the iron model, um, we are heading for um, then it's um, it's is a d orbital. So we have we do have the u and the and the j and uh, um, in term in terms of real material, then it turns out this uh, Holmes coupling j is more or less kind of uh, more or less fixed because it, it's for 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 instance for the typical iron and then the j. The reasonable value of Hong's J is between 0 0.6 and 1. And I, I know in the, but uh, we do have, uh, uh, but I, I think it is, okay, so, so the general answer is that I don't see there are kind of the limitations or upper limit we can reach. Because in other case, we, we, we do. It's not here, but, but, but we will do calculate this uh, the degenerate Hubble model in on the on the best lattice in infinite dimension. Right? So so if we consider five-fold degenerate 
of, of, of that uh, fivefold degenerate band model on best lattice on infinite dimension, then we can we can do this um, you know change in this either fix j scan u or fix u over j fix that ratio right then I think over there we was also don't have problem. I mean there are I think concerning that there are this famous uh, this genius transition like the few uh, I think it, it's an early related way where where the iron nickel like in the um if you if you fix u over j and it then scan u there are two regions of of uh, reduction of the good order called particle weight and the, those two those are kind of uh, it appears two two j basically initially it's, it it reduces really fast and then tend to saturate that's often, often people call this, this genius phase. But again, I think the answer is that um, generally we don't have this um, uh, kind of uh, kind of limitation on on you know this upper limit of U over J. And uh, of course, in, in in detailed calculation, you might. Uh, you know, because it, it's a solution with a nonlinear equation, right? So sometimes it would be helpful if you start from some small, small u or, or, or small u over j parameter. Because some, sometimes it, it actually, it, 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 it really depends on specific problem. And for the island, there's no problem. But for, for some system we do have though, sometimes we need to, you know, start from some smaller UJ value, we, 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 which converge with, I mean, very, very, very relatively easily, then you can, you know, this is adiabatic tune to the parameter value you want. But, it, but again, it depends on uh, the specific system. Sometimes this kind of adiabatic connect, connection is, uh, it, it becomes uh, necessary. Okay, so I guess um, we can I can go through this uh, example of the, of the iron. Um, in the in the uh, so so in in this uh, tu tutorial, I try to um, have some example like we we, we can compare we, we we can build on the previous model calculations we. we from which hopefully we have some general idea, then I try to have a similar real material which we can do uh, same type of calculation, right? So then we, we can have a kind of comparison between the model and the real material, but, but we'll focus on the same set of, set of calculation. So here we will we, we use iron to, to set up the uh, uh, polymeric calculation. And, uh, and the spin polarized ferromagnetic calculation. And uh, um, if we are interested in other, for, for instance, we also have, uh, I think in, in the previous, in the, 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 the there's um, uh, two, two years back, we also have some example handy to calculate this uh, model insert in phase in real material. Um, so if you're interested in that, we will, we can also uh, uh, have, the, have those examples for you. So here, um, okay, so the, the first step, as we have discussed, uh, is to perform a, a DDFT calculation. So the way, and I, um, and yeah, I think you, you have already some experience on using the uh, Andrews um, DFT code. Um, 
so so the way we do it it is that we you know if we can copy this line you may make a dft bold and uh, um let me just look at that and then we have uh here actually the the how you set up the calculator may may be a bit different from uh from andre's last updated version and also uh San Fuku's version um here because we are while i mean trying to very hard to maintain this common interface sometimes there are some lagging right? so here we do it a bit different so we have some initial uh in initialization script if if given a C file right so if we do that so this if, if you have some experience with with win 2k then actually the 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 logic is quite similar to win 2k it's um it, it's it, it's um it's basically set up the initial input based on either your C file or stretch file and generate the input file and this this uh inline command dash k simply set up the it's a uh, uh, kinetic energy cutoff for, for the plane wave which is used to expand uh, your your wave function and uh, uh in wind 2k there are similar criteria called this uh it's Morphine radius times this K max. And uh, here we print a similar quantity, it's roughly about seven. It's a it's a roughly about the value also recommended uh, in Win2K. Okay. So uh, the DFT calculation is actually pretty fast. So if we do that here, yeah, we can have more. There, there are probably some additional output here. It's just some uh, agnostic thing. I, I would be interesting while uh, kind of uh, developing this uh, interface. Um, I think I don't need to explain uh, anything related with the with the with the DFT code. Um, uh, and you have a detailed explanation under the input file uh, and the menu. But um, um, so once it's converged, it's a So th this should be the final energy one would get once it's converged. Um, then from that, uh, it for for pedagogical reason, then we want to do a first calculation with uh, with uh, no instruction at all. So it of course it then it will gives you the the. Um, the, the, the DFT results when the, the purpose is twofold. One is uh, to to further to uh, one is to of course well, one need to check numerically it is right. Then the other way is that because we have some analysis script, so if we ha have the you know have the results for u equal to k equal zero, so we we can basically plot all those uh, for instance balance structure. You live in a common script. Um, so, okay, here, and the, indeed we got the energy uh, like this. And so, if we, so if we go to the directory, if we co copy this line, we need to go. Right. 
here because I have already created calculated by but we can. Okay. So we need a shift file. So here, what I'm so then the next step is just to show how you would initialize the Google value calculation. So in the in the in the previous two examples, the the Google calculation is initialized within the Python script itself. And, uh, um, and it, but often, oftentimes it is useful because the setup is, for, especially for real material calculus, you know, the only information you would require is the, is the structure file. Then, then it, it would also be good if, if, if we just, uh, you know, have some script initialize your Google calculation given that structure file, right? So this is exactly what we have here. So we would use this command to initialize the Google calculation. The user have to an answer a few questions. And I suppose uh, this no knowledge have to be gained before you, know, you want to try this kind of uh, Medium capacity calculation, and if uh, because the the um, the the page list we, we, we which is the key Python library for the, this Google calculation, uh, it has interface to multiple different DFT package. So here we have to specify something specific uh, for 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 the interface we. With, 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 the, with this um, Andrew's uh, your HW code. Let me see if the result from the previous calculation. Um, so here we add this command dash u ev means uh, the underlying model, uh, this Hubble the model, use the unit of ev. And sometimes, in the other interface, we we use the unit of Ludberg rather than EV, and uh, and here the other one is a dash s one. That means uh, we have this uh, um, this spin com spin component. You have this net up and down, right? And so sometimes uh, they depend on different DFT packages. They they all is different, and uh, here we we set it to one so we assume this you know down first then up right? and uh, in other code for for instance win 2 k then they, they 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 choose the oxid convention so here uh we have some ex extra flag to uh to clarify that so if we do that and the, and the, just uh kind of a reminder the, the initialization of the Google calculation, uh, the, uh, I mean, the only required input file is your structure file. So, um, so then uh, here you would see some, you know, some, some uh, choices you can pick, but here uh, we first pick because first we, we only want to do a kind of a, uh, uh, preliminary calculation will, with u j equals zero, right? So we, we don't need to break the symmetry. So we do not break the symmetry. Then, um, then here, do we want to break orbital symmetry? Then there, there are three options. The first is no, that, that, that means all the orbitals are degenerate. Then the second is uh, uh, we, we consider this crystal field effect. So we, we, we consider the uh, all the local matrices which commute with the local point group operations of, of that particular site. And uh, the, the final way, the full symmetry breaking, that means you, 
you don't consider any symmetry at all. So here we, we I mean, this option is of course for uh, sometimes for the diagnostic purpose. Uh, but oftentimes in, in, uh, in real material, we, we will consider the crystal field effects. So we choose that. Then uh, we also include, do we want to include spin orbit coupling? Here, no, because iron, right? It's, it's not, not, the element is not that heavy, so we don't consider spin orbit. Then um, give us some, some uh, details, like uh, you will have the screen to cooling interaction and uh, how you will want to specify that. So one way is to specify the through the input of uh, how about the U and the Hong's J parameter. The other way is to specify it using uh, it, it, it's, it is a slider integral. For D, you would have F0, F2, F4, and then for F, you would have F0, F, F2, F4, and F6. But here we, then there are other way like um, this famous kind of Kananori, uh, approach to parameterize your coolant matrix and, and then more flexible, you can have this menu in. And then, so here we will choose this a slider condo parameterization, uh, specified by the Hubbard U and the and the, and the Hong's J parameter. Um, then the, this uh, we talked about the double counting option, right? So we have this full for double counting, this uh, F, uh, fully localized double counting, which is the, the, the often the double counting are adopted in DFT plus U calculus. We also use that. But here we mentioned this uh, because in, in the particular good weather calculation, we, 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 we choose a linearized double counting. So then but the, the, this full, fully localized double counting is not, is not in the linear form. So then we, we should add, add an out loop to, 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 up, to have an additional update for the double counting potential. Right? Then the, the, the default one is to choose the update along with your charge density loop. And that means, you know, uh, in your self consist calculation, you have an electron density loop. Uh, for, for, for the DFT plus G calculation. And then you also have the loop for, for double counting, but, but the, 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 these two external loop can be uh, carried out uh, together. And then there are also another option like fix DC, we talk about that. We, we, we fix the uh, nominal occupation of the specific element. And in that way, the, the, the double counting is in a linear form. So then, you don't do not need an external loop uh, for, for, for your double counting potential. And then there are also this uh, uh, another option, the fully DC self consistent means uh, you solve your Hubbard model. It, on the model level, you already updated the, you, 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 you iterate that your double counting while you are solving this Hubbard model. Right. So, um, you mean in practice, we find that the, the, the first option uh, is the most efficient if you want to use this fully localized double counting. And of course, there are, there are options like in, in model calculation, right? you, you don't need a double counting at all. So, you know, there, there is this option. So we choose this uh, the default one. Then the, then the next one is about the the, the solver, you solve it, it's a physical bus uh, coupled cluster, right? So you, you have this cluster, how, how you solve that? And in principle, there are kind of a, a full uh, arsenal of, of approaches you, you can use because here we, we are just interested in the, in the, um, in, in the, in the ground state of, of this finite cluster, right? So, we can use ED, we can use for, for instance, we, we, we can use a quantum chemistry method. Uh, for instance, the couple cluster and, and, and uh, um, 
Well, four CI is equivalent to EV, but but you have you can have, have you can have but uh, five finite finite truncation for 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 the for the CI right for for instance CISD right? and uh, you can potentially also use the the uh, quantum computing it's a variational quantum eigen solver for instance we have demonstrated that it's possible to use a variational quantum eigen solver on real quantum device to solve the uh, to, to solve this uh, um, model Hamiltonian on the Guzwella level. It has been explicitly demonstrated uh, and published. And here, and yeah, and we actually have this, uh, I think Nicola also mentioned that we, we, we have this uh, machine learning solvers and uh, um, it's, it's in the experimental stage, I think. Uh, it, it will be released, um, and then there are also options like you can use DMRG, and uh, so there there are various flag, uh, flavors to choose. And here, even for ED, right, we we can choose. You can take advantage of different symmetries. And here, because uh, we we don't consider spin out orbit coupling, so SV is another symmetry we we can we, we can take advantage. So, so we will choose this, which is ED with the SD symmetry. Um, then uh, this uh, e uh, equivalent at indices, uh, it's just consider a unicell. You might have uh, many, uh, you might have many different atoms. And the same atoms are actually equivalent. They are, they are in the same weak off position, right? So then they are equivalent. Then the, the, in a sense, the, 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 you can take advantage of this additional symmetry to enforce that all the local quantities sh should be the same. So then as a result, you can reduce the number of uh, the, the dimension of your solution for the uh, linear equation. So, but here we only have one atom, so we choose uh, this, uh, we only have this option. Right? But if say if you have five atoms, then if you specify this way, I mean the first three atoms are equivalent, and this and the and this and this and, and the uh, the other two atoms are also equivalent. And we, we then it, the the script will go through the atoms, they go through the equivalent atoms, like the first atom, the iron. Then it asks you, is this, is this atom correlated? By default, yes. So we just then we will, we will choose whether the quality shell is S, P, D, or F. Uh, here for real material, we typically only consider one one shell to be correlated. But the actually the if you uh, if in some case like if you want to do to do some particular lattice, we actually. You, you can go beyond this, this limit. The code can also take care of um, uh, uh, more multiple shells. But here, the, this interface is specifically for real material. So, I mean, so for iron, we will choose it's a D shell, right? Because when we do the DFD stretch and stretch calculation, the, 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 the set of narrow band, narrow occupied bands near the Fermi level is a D orbit, is a, a D band. Right? So we know. From physics, it's the, it's an e orbital, which should be uh, treated as a correlated. Then here, when we uh, because we we choose the way to specify the polar matrix using U J parameter. So um, so uh, so then uh, we and as I said, we want to try this uh, vanishing U J first. Right? So we set all of them all zero. So okay, so then all the informations are, are there. Then it it will analyze the uh, the local site symmetry uh, of, of the quality site, and uh, you know this it, it is a, a point group local point group symmetry, and the using the local point group symmetry, then it it tells you that there are two in equivalent representation, and as it as it turns out the your all your local symmetry can be um, 
Okay, we can check now for this. So next we have one scene. We can take a look at the, the, the sky. Uh, so due, due to due to the it's it's OH find the group symmetry, then actually all your locals local uh, one particle matrices which commute with the lo local uh, point of loop symmetry have it, have, have the, this diagonal form. Right? Essentially, it's, it's it's just the E and the T to be splitting. This is uh, uh, um, it's, this is this, this is because the uh, again become the local O H uh, point of loop symmetry for the D orbital. With this. Um, Yeah, in the top tutorial, we also can, we can check this. Um, uh, I think one additional thing, uh, uh, we actually, the code automatically generates the unitary transformation among the local orbitals, such that your, uh, the representation of your local one particle matrix in, in that symmetry adapted uh, Orbital basis will have that, that a nice diagonal form. The the, the these kind of are uh, all uh, automatically generated by the by the script. So um, then, in addition, we have some uh, okay. So in addition, if we so one there uh, one additional. In this file, this is for the com list of i and i. It 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 basically uh, share the similar structure as a as the same same focus com DMFD code, but but it's simply much simpler because here we don't need that um, much information. So here it's, we just um, uh, first. The first line tells where the DFT calculation is located. Right? Then it tells it specify that where D and doing LDA plus with calculation. And here specify how many, you know, how you would like to do the part, uh, the parallel job. Right? You can specify a number of calls you have. And uh, here is the uh, uh, is uh, Number of iteration for the for for for, for the uh, electron density update, right? and actually it's um, here actually. So the maximum would be fifty, but, but if we set u equal to j equal to zero, because it's essentially DFT calculation already converging right? so it will finish in one iteration. And uh, uh, here actually, there's a little bit of redundancy here, but but uh, somehow because when we Construct the interface. Uh, this, this interface do not have access to my uh, um, this independent good weather calculation. Right? So here I should still give the information about the the the, the correlated shell and the, and the, and the corresponding site. But the format is the same as the as the com DMFT calculation, and the, the, the these two lines are exactly the same as, as you would do for the from DMT calculation. This basically provides the same information about the equivalence of, of different sites. And this line is also the same about it's about the energy window you, you would like to use to construct your uh, one year function, which you would use as a projector. So, um, Once you have that, um, you can do this. Yeah. Um, the calculation. Um, Uh, 
Christ. Okay, so because it's uh, probably the calculation, it's um, uh, all one is nine, so it, it's um, it, it it appears it gets stuck, but uh, actually it's the uh, in the process of constructing the one year uh, function. Um, so we we wait a bit, but but uh, uh, with that, I think um, you can check indeed we finish in one iteration. Then indeed the, the, the final energy is, is, is the same as the TFT, right? And uh, here there are some additional information with this. This air risk in the uh, you have the error vector in the Kurzweil nonlinear equation. So this is this one gives the maximum uh, element in, in that error vector. So, so it, this is a good uh, 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 criteria to to determine the convergence of the of the Kurzweil solution. And we also have this, this minimum Z. I mean, the Z is again the quadriparticle weight. So here I explicitly print out the, the minimum Z because you know this, this is a, one of the interesting quantity which will basically decrease to zero if you're entering more phase. So the question, so what if you only want to treat a subset of f of the two that's already, or maybe your DNA of the two that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, this uh, could, could be, down, for instance, we um, okay. So, so, so the short answer is that in the current version, if you if you, if, you, if we initialize the calculation using the given script, then we do not have the option to do that yet. But uh, we. I mean, it's, it's always possible, right? You, you, like you, you do the in, in, in initialization, like the model case, you, you can exclude, I mean, you, of course, it requires some, some, some uh, familiarity with the code. You can select a subset of the orbitals to do that. But the, yeah, the, uh, on the other hand, um, We we kind of the, the 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 reason we we don't have that is also that because the choosing a subset of orbital is often times uh, often times the option for efficiency. For, for instance, it's often a choice in DMFT, right? For for instance, if you calculated this it, this iridates um, compound, and oftentimes you can you can consider this big crystal field splitting and the and the small coupling, and then essentially you can only narrow down one particular f orbital, right? Then, then, then you do, do the calculation, uh, kind of adding to impression for one that for one particular orbital. That's a great simplification, but uh, it, it's uh, the, the reason that will put will allow us to solve the, this Hamilton in very Hamiltonian more efficiently, so we. We would prefer not to take that approximation because anyway, that that is an approximation that isolated manifold is still coupled with with other channels, right? You don't know. I mean, whether the these coupling is indeed not important or not. So in in the Kurzweil case, we have the we we kind of we don't have problem like solving this. Uh, uh, in build model for D 
or at least part of the F in good model. So that is mainly the reason we kind of uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, is actually actually to remove that option. So in the sense that we want to uh, uh, do you know in 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 the in the kind of uh, uh, acceptable efficiency, we want to do this as as complete as possible. Um, okay. Okay. So. So the uh, the main besides the besides some crucial quantities which are uh, stored in the HDF five format in this glog dot h five file, for instance, this uh, local orbital equations and there is a uh, R matrix and some other other uh, quantities. And then, uh, a lot of information are printed out in text format in the in the wolf.log file. For instance, it gives us the um, remember in, in the morning lecture we talk about we we will we will remove the local onsite of one body part from the band dispersion to our local Hamiltonian. So and so here we see the local one body part of the Hamiltonian. And uh, here actually you can explicitly see the, the, the bare uh, band splitting. And the, you can actually see you know the, 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 it's a EGT to the splitting and all, all, and all, also the how how different uh, it, 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 among this EG and T2EG, right? And of uh, here, I mean, for, uh, for the molecular reason, we will do some stimulation, but you, you can already see the, the, this, the, uh, the, act, the, actually this, this the, uh, the local quantity actually is, all, is already in, to a, a good accuracy, it's already in a very, very good diagonal form. It, it, this is essentially the, the error associated with the simulation. And uh, the um, some crucial information like the, you know, because here we are essentially solve solving um, half the model, right? So we have some, you know, the total energy of the half the model. And, uh, um, and, oh, and again, because here, we are, we are setting u j equals zero. Of course, this um, renormalization would be one. And um, yeah, and let, let's move to the next about this. Um, yeah, and actually, uh, we, we prepared a simple script, which actually can, for instance, can use to plot the band structure of the iron uh, with along the default high, high symmetry paths and uh, um, with the uh, this uh, um, specific uh, symbol for the weight for the weight of the 3D orbital. So, um, And so then, um, so I'm using some remote machine, then let's see what we have currently. Oh.
Okay, um, so then for, to do the paramagnetic iron calculation, then, uh, there are, yeah, it's, it's just, just the same, same benefit problem. But basically, this is the uh, DFT LDA benefit of iron. Then for, um, then to do the uh, calculation with, um, with, with, with the realistic uh, uh, cooling interaction parameter. Um, here, I mean, it's actually, sorry. Then uh, here we, have, we actually provide a simple script uh, to, to modify the uh, interaction parameters. So you simply, you know, have this parameter, then it will basically white as it, it will modify the, the, the data in your G prime dot H5 file um, with the updated coolant uh, in front. Then, then, um, then you do this, I mean, the, the command is exactly the same. Uh, so, Then, uh, actually, um, if you want to save time, some time, right? You, you can, you can, for instance. Uh, you can all want to check, uh, uh, quickly ch ch check some results with, uh, with a few lines. You can reduce this uh, max, uh, max iteration to be, to, for this to be two, then, then, then the code will only run, run uh, um, uh, two cycles for, for the electron density. Then, then you can already check some, uh, so for instance, when you run that, you will typically see um, two, uh, two log files, like one is the, is the CMD dot log. It will uh, simply you know, tell you some, some uh, basic information like uh, the, 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 the prefix of your job and you are, you know, your uh, um, calculation, for instance, the DFD is done in this lattice directory, the, the, the one year interface is in, in, in this directory, and the real calculation is in the low edge. By the way, this follows the same format as the uh, COMDMT uh, code. And then it, it will basically show for, for iteration zero what. Uh, uh, um, well, what uh, 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 command have, have been executed? Right? Because for for the uh, convenience, uh, a lot of the a, a lot of the job have, have been you know will be done by uh, um, by independent executable files. It's kind of kind of following the same logic as, as Unix, right? You, you want to have some. You know, very small tools to to, uh, to finish to finish different function, and you you just just have a, a kind of a script to link them together to finish some job. Um, so for so for instance, you can see that we have this um, um, we constructed it to one year phase. Then uh, then um, then we actually. Uh, because the one-year interface is exactly the same as the DMT, and the, for, for, for the side boot calculation, then there are additional, some kind of inter, additional translations. Right? So here, the, 
is the G1 here is the, is the additional layer uh, to, to set, set, set up the common uh, input file for Foucault's weather calculation. Then we have one single script to, to, uh, to perform the good weather calculation for specific model. Um, then uh, finally, we need to, um, you know, we, we need to up, update the electron density, right? So there's the additional interface from the good weather to the, to, to the DFT code, we, which we basically need to pass the information like the electron density has been renormalized, right? So we, we need to pass the information to pass this information in particular uh, format to, to, to uh, TFT. So this is the uh, Jin Wangden script. Then once we have that, then we will start another one, one, one shot DFT calculation. What it does is it reads in the updated electron density, then uh, mix with the older one, then you know, then start to do one calculation. Basically, it it, it calculates it set up the Kuhn-Chen Hamiltonian, diagonalize it, get all the band wave function uh, band eigenvalue. Then once we have that, then we uh, cycle back to COM1, which you know selected the bands within certain energy window, then, then we will construct the uh, maximum local volume function and uh, this cycle continues. And, uh, it, and finally, actually, it will also give you some timing information. For instance, for the, this particular calculation, um, uh, it's about, you know, this one year interface and the, the cycles, you know, the, about um, probably uh, the, the, these are two, uh, main code which uh, takes some time. So here, for instance, I can get a little bit. If you start from scratch, then typically it will, it will finish in 16 iterations. Then uh, this, this converge.log file then recorded the uh, uh, main uh, uh, convergence information. For instance, this, uh, this, uh, relative to this change of uh, electron density is it, it, either, you know, how well the total energy converges. And this, uh, we also plot this uh, chemical potential. So sometimes it becomes a good uh, indicator if, if there's some uh, problem. And then we also print this basically to record how well, uh, how well the, uh, the nonlinear good water equation uh, converges, right? And you can see uh, sometimes, you know, it, it converges, I mean, it's fine, but, but not as good, right? But, uh, you know, it, because it's, it's, it's an iterative procedure, and, uh, and sometimes you can, you can live with that as long as, you know, finally it, it converges. Usually our criteria is 10 to negative 5 for the, uh, for the, for the um, error vector, which is basically the, the difference of the, um, it is a uh, one electron density matrix and all, also this R matrix. So it's um, reasonably, you, you, you would say the order magnitude of that is about one. Uh, then, the, then finally, we also print this, um, this Z. Okay, again, we'll print the minimum value it's a good indicator, and uh, we can also see the relative convergence of that. Um, okay. 
And then once actually you, you could check is the, is the variation of the um, uh, occupation of the d orbitals introduced due, due to the electron correlation. So for instance, in the, in the DFT case, then it's, um, you know, the total is about 6.45 and now it, well, it's about the same, right? It, you, usually it will reduce a bit because of the correlation. And again, the, this, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it becomes pretty uh, crucial for the, uh, I mean, so sometimes the electron occupation uh, is pretty crucial. Um, and there, oh yeah, in the, it's also instructive to check this uh, uh, boundary normalization factor or the quasi particle weight, which is printed out here. And uh, basically, again, you can see this uh, EG and the PGD splitting. Since we have the, uh, the same format, we, we can actually use the same script to plot the band structure, and we can um, we can explicitly compare uh, the variation of the band structure with and without uh, this uh, screen cooling interaction. And we have a prepare a script uh, there in in the photo figure one. So you, you can see indeed as expected, right? So when you add in the uh, add in the local cooling interactions, then the effect of local cooling interaction is that uh, it will the, reduce the chance of hopping if the if if the site the other electron want to hop in is already occupied, right? So it is the additional cooling penalty. So the Result that the the uh, inside hopping is reduced, then you know it, hopping is reduced, and then the band will will be narrowed. Right? So uh, as you can see, the the majority character of the band here are D band. Right? So then you can obviously see this uh, this D band uh, are, are narrowed due to this uh, polarizing effect. Okay, I'm back then. Yeah, I think I What, what, what this step does is uh, because here we have the solution and uh, it, it just do a one year interpolation along, along the, this uh, high symmetry care paths and do the, do, the, uh, uh, do the calculation. So it involves the one year interpolation. 
So, uh, yeah, so, so the so finally it's the about the Feynman calculation. And here we uh, we talk about, I mean, in, 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 I mean, one way to do this, uh, to set up the Feynman calculation is to do the Peter the above steps. Right? You, we kind of change the answer here. So there's uh, this um, uh, uh, this spin symmetry breaking. You want to check yes. Uh, so you start from scratch. Or here we will provide another way. If, if you already have done this parametric calculation, then uh, first you can set up your uh, um, set up another fold. For Feynman calculation, and you go, go to this, um, go to this new folder. Then the um, then you can see that if you have already done your calculation, there the the key um uh, the input are stored in, in this init.json file. Uh, then the uh, the simplest way is to you, you change this uh, I spin entry from one to two. So so then it, it, it will essentially it will break the spin symmetry. Then then you initialize it again. When once it, if this file is present, then this initialization script will, because the initialization script will first check the existence of this file. Right? If it exists, then it won't uh, pop up on the screen to, to ask you because it was simply read an answer from the key from this initialized file. So this is the way you only change this uh, spin here, then then you, you do the initialization. It, it it won't ask you anything. It will just uh, regenerate the input file corresponding to a, a Feynman calculation of of the for the system. Then one additional step is that uh, it's just like when you do either either if you're from DFT, you do a VASPA calculation, you set it, you need to set up uh, input in, in the in car file to specify you know how you would break the spin symmetry, right? And for Feynman, then probably it's, you, you probably want to uh, set you know all up, right? Or I mean for Feynman, you want to you want to specify the spin configuration. Same thing here. We have additional script. Ask you like, um, you like, um, well, again, it will, it will kind of confirm from you that you are, you are using a unit of EV. And then uh, it will ask you uh, the, so, so the way we do the magnetic calculation is that we add initial the local magnetic field to, to break the spin symmetry. So then in the typical uh, simple calculation, you, 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 you want the, that initial magnetic field in the initial step only. After that, you, you would remove that. But there are also cases you are interested in adding a constant magnetic field. Right. So here we have two options. Uh, of course, here because we are only interested in this, uh, this uh, Feynman calculation, we wanted this uh, spin symmetry working field uh, applied on the initial step only. Uh, so then we choose that. So then, uh, then here uh, again, because here we, we don't have spin orbit coupling. If we have spin orbit coupling, then actually we need to specify which the direction you want the moment to, to point to. Right? And uh, but here because there, there, there are no spin orbit coupling, every direction is the same. So we can just choose the default one, zero, zero, one along the z direction. And then we enter the, mag the magnitude of the local magnetic field. For instance, we typically we choose a 0 0.3 uh, EV per, per ball magneton. 
And uh, the, the final one is that because here essentially we'll introduce a local field, and then we want to make sure the local field will, is a uh, kind of commutes with the local point group symmetry. And indeed, right, it, it should. So it gives a, a, a symmetry error of, of literally zero. Um, and the final step before the calculation that we want to remove this. Why? Because the, 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 the solution of the previous parameter calculation is stored in this file. And uh, we, when we start the calculation, we oftentimes will, the code will check this file. If, 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 if it has this file, then it will simply read, read that solution. Then if the solution is read, then it will, it, it's so suppose you are doing a continuous run. If you are doing a continuous run, then it won't apply this initial magnetic field, right? Because it's already assumed it's a continuous run. So, so you want to remove that. And uh, after that, then you move, move uh, one level up, then uh, you, you the same, basically it's the same command. Uh, because all, all the necessary input information is already updated in the g1.h5 file. Um, then, um, then it will probably take a lot of same iterations as you here. And uh, one can see that uh, it's, it's like you would expect that, right? Because uh, in, when, when you solve the same model, if you break the spin symmetry, if the system goes to that uh, symmetry breaking solution, then it, the, 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 the spin symmetry breaking solution must have low energy than, than the parameter. Indeed, it is also true. So this one is uh, N384, and uh, for, the, for the parameter case, it's uh, 91. Uh, so it's about 0 0.2 with the gain in the energy. Um, yeah, then um, uh, after that conversion, you can again do this exactly the same script. You can plot the bandit structure. Uh, so you can explicitly see the uh, spin minority and the spin majority uh, 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 band structure. And, uh, and uh, for the uh, for the detailed comparison, like um, what is I mean, um, kind of so the so how does this uh, spin polar solution from DFT plus Venezuela compare with, with, for instance, uh, spin polarized LDA, spin polarized GGA, right? And uh, is there any common thing or, or, or kind of different perspective and the how well do they agree with photo emission those stuff? Actually, it has already been studied. And uh, I have listed the, the, the main reference here. So the, uh, and I, say, I think if you do further then uh, uh, the, 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 basically the DFT plus well a fifth, Fix obviously it fixed the problem of LDA because if you do LDA, you, you compare different phases, you will find that FCC phase has low energy than DCC. But by, by GMT plus code well, it fixed the problem. Of course, the problem has already been fixed in GDA. Right? And uh, but there are some other perspective which are different. I mean, you, you can only get it from a DFT plus code well calculation. And then specifically, you can you can, can check these uh, two papers. So from one is from Fab Renewable Group, another one is from Gilliman Group. Um, and uh, this this one actually is, is uh, this relevant reference is relevant for the uh, for the question um, uh, raised about the this uh, your over J stuff and also this multiple bands and uh, this, this genius phase, and you can check this space for this uh, Nicola. Uh, he studied it, 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 it's uh, 
this um, degenerate how how the band we were with a self semi separate entity states and from that and then up to this uh, realist material this ironic type systems they basically you can see this uh, uh, orbital differentiations and then there were uh, one some particular uh, orbital I remember it's T X Y right it's 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 it, uh, particularly uh, sensitive to the cooling pressure and has a has a, a, a smaller renormalization uh, factor or effectively it's a larger mass and I think on, on, on the first day gave it also presented it is it's, uh, on the series of uh, iron nicktides how the effective mass of the of the orbital varies across different systems so here we really can give similar information um, yeah, I see one question. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, there are also yeah, these are the pen. And uh, there we also so I don't think Nicola also gave that we also have some uh, interesting publications like using DFT plus as well, uh, you know, to solve solve this first diagram of uh, uh, electronic structure of more kind of more challenging uh, uh, nine and, and actinine systems yeah. and uh, there, there are also recent publications on applying that for a series of uh, transition metal oxides and uh, in the, over there we, we can at least solve part of the problem uh, about the, the stability among among the different phases. Um, okay, the, and they briefly touch the, the this, uh, LQS GW plus a G risk calculation. Um, again, the, the underlying uh, philosophy, philosophy is, is, is the same, right? Because uh, basically, the the Kudula method is used to solve, a, you know, a particular generalized Hubbard model, and uh, in, in in terms of you know link to real material, then we really rely on certain type of electronic spectral method. As long as that method can give us a uh, uh, kind of one particle Hamiltonian, right? So, so this LQS GW can also do that. So we naturally we can also interface with LQS GW to perform the similar calculation. Adding, presumably, LQS GW ha has a more or less uh, pretty good perturbative type. Calculate the uh, uh, treatment for the electron correlation. So it's the same logic, it's the same logic as the, the GW plus MFT, right? And here we, we, we can basically use the same logic to, to treat the uh, local cooling interaction at the good weather level. Right? And uh, uh, I noticed, yeah, and the note noticed some great improvement probably in. On the uh, NGS code because we develop for the more, but uh, for, for for this calculation with the current code, we are uh, we actually pretty, are still quite computational intensive for the LQS GW calculation. So in in in, in, in the data, I in my calculation actually I used the 128 cores and it will run about uh, 
I think it finished the less than one day with this menopause, but also of course it depends on on the detailed uh, hardware, right? And uh, but 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 and US code actually has pretty good parallel efficiency. Um, so I mean you can either try that or probably you, you wouldn't be interested because anyway you are um, in Andrew's session there are also the various DFT calculations and GW calculations. You probably already have some experience. That's um, so. The question is: um, so GGS can can do can do magnetic calculation. How about superconductivity? Uh, the, the the answer is uh, on the formalism level. Yes, it's already has been demonstrated, and uh, and uh, and on the code level, it's not in the current code yet. Um, but, but 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 it's definitely in in, in the plan to to ha have that, and uh, and concerning that, there are another interesting development. I think uh, by by Song Han Li. Um, basically, it's it's a uh, it's uh, I think one well, well, say it's adding the uh, adding these fluctuations, and if you can the there are. Uh, Nice approach to predict the the uh, uh, the the the, the superconductivity susceptibility as a function of u and j. And he, he has a nice uh, very nice results in the archive. If you if you are interested in, uh, they, they definitely want to check out that. And we also do have some plan to. To uh to include that in the in, in, in the future, uh, in, in in the future work, I think it would it would it would be very uh helpful if we can also include in that uh part in in the in in the come with code. Um, there are another question. It's a uh, in principle assuming a very magnet. I don't care if the person was able to get the magnetic answer to the energy. If so, how would it compare with DFT? Uh, well, uh, actually, it's it's a very interesting question because um, I think several years back um, there are calculations about uh, this magnetic answer to the energy within DFT plus uh, DMFT, and uh, here we are of course we can follow the same. Same, same rule to do that, but I uh, well because of you know constraints of time, I I cannot give it direct answer for the uh, for for the comparison of DFT plus G and U on the magnet, magnetic and electric energy calculation, uh, but uh, I would believe that the same same conclusion would carry over. Uh, we carry over for the comparison between DFT plus DMFT and the DFT plus U for the magnetic and uh, isotropic calculation. In that case, then because there are some uh, some detailed detailed uh, uh, difference on a specific implementation. For 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 instance, here we are using a we we break the spin symmetry at the Boswell level, so the DFT part we always use the spin restricted LDA. So 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 in, in that case we don't have the uh, spin dependent um, exchange correlation energy. Right? So the the spin system is working completely from the uh, onside Harvard interaction. And uh, it's the, the, the same implementation is done for the for, for, for the typical typical DFT plus DMFT. I think the reason there 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 are some additional complexity if you want to you know mix for instance LSDA with DMFT, then 
there, there, there are additional layer of complexity before the double counting. So, yeah. So then the, the, the conclusion over there is that, uh, uh, I, I think that that's the paper in PRX done by um, uh, Zhu Jianxin's group in Los Alamos. So the, the, the all over there, the, the conclusion is that the magnetic and social energy is less sensitive to you than DFT plus U. And uh, on the reasonable uh, values for, for the interaction parameters, then DFT plus uh, the DMFT gives pretty close magnetic and such energy value for the, uh, for the, I think that the material is uh, eaching, I think it's eaching, eaching cobalt fire. So, I mean, uh, of course, there's, I did, I did, didn't follow up, like, you know, well, well actually, we, we also, lo locally in M's lab, we also did some uh, magnetic and sort of energy calculation using DFT plus DMT for a series of cobalt compounds. And it looks, I mean, uh, uh, systematically uh, kind of more, I would say more reliable in the sense that in a certain range of parameter, the, the, the answer is stay close to the experiment. But, but for, for DFT plus U, uh, you have to, you, you will see that this, the magnetic and structural energy is much more sensitive to you. And of course you, you can tune certain U to, you know, to certain, you know, to, to make it close to experiment, right? But uh, with, with one case, we are pretty sure that in, in this COBOL, uh, COBOL, uh, this, this Samarian COBOL uh, compound that even if you tune the U to the, this, you know, close to the experimental value, if you analyze the components, it, it can be, you know, it, it, it sometimes it can be very unreasonable. So, I mean, so all these kind of, Kind of interesting, interesting uh, uh, directions to explore further. Yeah, so I think we have uh, seven minutes left. Let me just uh, um, yeah to, to so finish this comments on this. Uh, so I have you know put this pre-calculated. Uh, 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 LKSGW in, in the Dropbox, so you can download there. But uh, the point is that it's it's also quite 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 big. Um, I guess it's because here we have a pretty dense uh, frequency mesh and all these uh, things. Um, but when, when once you download that, you can basically do the calculation uh, in a literally the same way. Uh, as you would do for 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 the iron, right? So you go to you know you create some directory, go there, you do the initialization, and a similar thing. I mean, uh, there are some questions uh, posted on screen, and I suppose and I hope I have give some explanation, and also the hopefully the notes over there are are, are self kind of self explained. Uh, enough. Um, otherwise, you can always, you know, ask questions in, in the Slack. Um, yeah, the, here the only difference is that we have an additional element of, of the selenide. So here, because we, we don't consider this to be correct, right? we simply answer no. Right? So then, uh, oh yeah, and there, there also this equivalent thing because there are two different atoms and two and a, and a, and in total four sides, right? So here zero, zero, two, two means that the first two sides are equivalent, and then the next two sides are also equivalent. Then with this, uh, it also do this uh, local symmetry analysis. Oh, by the way, we use this uh, uh, material project uh, to get the discharge files and also the uh, 
also the uh, their 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 package is high enough again to to perform all, all these uh, symmetry analysis. Um, so with so with this uh, particular local point of group symmetry, then you have uh, four uh, in, in, in equivalent uh, representations, and uh, as a result, in that particular symmetry, your um, your uh, local local one body matrices would have this splitting. Uh, still, it is diagonal, but, but it has more splitting. So as you can see, if you have a even lower uh, lower side symmetry, then you know more and more equivalent or, or, or non 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 zero elements of the pop up. So then, essentially, it will increase the dimension of your solution vector for the for the nonlinear uh, equation. Um, and then here we have similar uh, similar setup for for the one year uh, for for the uh, for the interface. And then the only thing that we we change the method to LQS GW plus this, right? and uh, otherwise the uh, uh, it will remain the same. And uh, uh, when, well, actually, because here it's only a single shot calculation, once you finish LQS GW calculation, the, the, the calculation of, um, of, of, of LQS GW plus G is very fast because you only, it only needs one iteration. And, uh, and the, then after that, you can do, you know, you use that same plot to plot the balance structure, and you can compare further with the experimental. Uh, well, actually, if you, if you are interested, then you can do a similar calculation, right? You can set this interruption parameter to be zero, and you can you can you can compare. Then you can compare the LQS GW band with, with the LQS GW uh, plus G band, right? You can but basically the correlation effect is. A, is again, I mean, narrow the bands and uh, shift these uh, ex expand extremes close to the Fermi level, and uh, and it indeed it is it is uh, it is a correct trend that the the, the bands are narrower and the extremes are closer to the to the Fermi level. As you can see from the either the experiment data or from the DFT plus the NFT calculation by a uh, uh, sample choice. So, uh, well, I think this uh, concludes the tutorial. We are about the, uh, the, the time. And uh, again, um, um, if, if you, if you, if you, um, you know, the case of the question. Uh, yeah, it's the because here there are there are uh, well, if you have some experience where where the where the one one year ninety right it, it becomes uh, it, especially if you have a large window or, or la large unit cell it sometimes it takes takes a while and. Uh, and of course, there are other ways to to uh, kind of construct the, the, the low orbital, as I said previously. And uh, for, for, for instance, if you use projected one year orbital, then, then, then this will not be a bottleneck. But there is some uh, advantage for, for con, con one because uh, um, in, in that case, you have a complete tidal banding representation of, of the banding structure. But if you if we do this project one year, then we, then we only have the access to the co uh, correlated B orbitals. So in that sense, we for instance we, we it's not convenient to do any one year integration stuff. But I think that there is it's, it's a one year uh, uh, interface probably can. I mean the the, the one year nineties keep uh, they kind of keep improving. And so. But uh, I think that um, it, it is it is not, not, not the main. Uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, in this parameter, 
you know, spiral matter calculation in this world software is uh, more efficient, right? Because fewer, because the dimension of the solution vector is small. And uh, if you go to the fairly minor case, they actually they have become probably comparable. Yeah, because it, it, it's, it's, it's about, I think it's mainly about here. The 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 the, the, the way I solve it is it's quite efficient. Yeah. Okay, um so this concludes the tutorial. Um again, I'll ask questions in Slack and uh, um yeah, thank you. And uh, are there any concluding remarks, uh, either Vincent or? Hi, um, Young Sun. Yes, if you are finished and there are no further questions, uh -huh. I will conclude. Uh, I will send an email out with the location uh, for the links, uh, the recordings of the uh, sessions. So thank you everybody for participating. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'd like to thank you all for your participation. You really added a lot to it. I mean, it, we couldn't, we, I think we learn a lot from the school, I hope from so. all of your participation. Um, thank you, Vincent. So thank you all your students for your interest and, and we hope we get to hear more from you and hear how you're using the code and, and uh, stay in touch. Very good. Thank you very much, Vincent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Yangshan. Thank you, everyone.